Welcome back to a Nussie build. Today we are building a Brindleton Bay bungalow in, this is a shocker, I'm sure to you all, in Brindleton Bay. Um, so this is a custom content build and it does obviously require cats and dogs as we're building in Brindleton Bay and I do use peacemakers cats and dogs build extended i believe is the name of it anyway he's got some custom windows from cats and dogs i use i think some of the um game items from cats and dogs so we are in brindleton bay this house was actually inspired by kind of a coastal house that i'd seen um it's actually a believe they're shower curtain design company it's a weird niche but uh they had done a home tour with uh west elm and they had of their own home the the couple who designs the shower curtains and i think other bathroom maybe it's just shower curtains um but they had done a home tour with west elm with some of their products and I loved the layout of their house and the style too, but particularly the layout. So um, there were only a f few shots, like I never saw the outside of the house. So, um, but very much this, this kitchen L-shaped living room that this house has was heavily inspired by their house. Um, I will throw up a link to that West Elm article in the description if you guys check it out. Um, obviously it was kind of sad because you can't use there are no cool, I'm sure if I'd really looked hard, there probably are some cool CC shower curtains, but um, because I do a mix and I wasn't, I don't like seek out specific CC items usually. Um, though I did seek out a specific kitchen for this build. So I just generally don't speak, seek out specific CC items, custom content. Um, and so they're, you're really limited on shower curtains, which is kind of unfortunate, a build that was, Roughly inspired by shower curtain designers. Uh, and I think they may design other fabrics. I'm really, probably should have done more research into brand before, but it was really their home I fell in love with. So we have already breezed through the roof here. Um, so like I said, I didn't know, I didn't actually have a like reference image of the outside of the house. So I kind of based it on the layout I could guess from the inside. And then the exterior is modeled after basically a um, coastal New York kind of coastal style. And then so we use those um, wooden shingles. And use kind of those monotones those are actually generally i feel like a little bit like the actual like new york coastal bungalows i looked at actually like very flat looking in the front and that looks terrible in the sims so we added some extra dimension that i don't think they would really have um and then those skylights that you saw me do um were in from the original house um and i had seen um I believe Lil Simsy do them, but this particular roof was giving me trouble and it was actually a tutorial from Kate Emerald that I will also throw down in the description that really helped me figure out to get those skylights in there. Um, you'll see here I'm kind of like fiddling with the roof to make sure that the ends are the right colors. Um, but, but yeah, so th this house has probably a little more dimension and ended up feeling like way i mean there's somewhere where dimensions real world dimensions and sims dimensions nary do they meet um so this house is three bedrooms um the master bedroom is absolutely enormous and part of that's because i like bumped it out to give it more dimension to the front of the house so like just ended up with a bunch of extra space inside um which ends up in my opinion actually being very cute but um, but this house, I feel like, is way better than the real-life house it was based off of. But it ends up, I feel like, fitting this size a lot perfectly. Um, it fits the family. Both the family that actually lives on the slot, but the family I had in mind for the slot perfectly. So, it's a big house. But I, th I think in the end of the day, 
uh, it all kind of worked out. And here I am working on the garden and you will see, you will have noticed at some point that just a million debug items appeared. Um, I don't really think that it's particularly interesting for more pe most people probably to watch me like suffer through trying to pull things out of debug. Um, but I knew that this house gonna end up being expensive and I wanted a lot of landscaping. I'd seen a photo of some like houses with famous gardens and like Montauk and um, upper New York State. I wanted a lot of landscaping and so that debug comes in. Um, so if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, that's the BB that show hidden objects and BB that show live edit objects you can go in. Um, there's lots of plants in there, some that we have in the um, normal build and buy and some that we don't and go and pull those out, use them in your builds for free. Um, but what I did was I went through and kind of pulled out everything I wanted um, and just stuck a lot and then I went back and now I'm actually landscape. Because for those of you, this is my first time, was my first time building with a tool, um, which stands for take objects off lot. And I have never used it before, but for those of you who have, I think it was this week or last week, um, they came out with an update that lets you clone debug items. So one of the really annoying thing about debug items is that once you place them, you can't use the little eyedropper tool on them. So like if I find a plant I want and then I decide I want two of that plant, I have to go dig back through the unlabeled debug menu. Um, and honestly, I think that I kind of limited how much I'd want to do because I only have so much patience. I'm a limited person. But this new update with tool means that I can take out a tree. Um, you hop into live mode or live mode, as some people call it. In my head, it's very much live mode. Um, I don't know. What do you guys call it? Live mode? Live mode? Um, but uh, you hop into live mode. You have to be in live mode to use tool just the way it's coded. Um, and you shift click on the object and then you, or is it alt click? I will, I will clarify this in the comments. I, I believe, well, you shift click to select the object. And then after that, I believe you alt click to duplicate them if I'm not mistaken. But, um, it makes using debug items wonderful. The pond I built in the backyard was easier. Uh, it's just, it's a super pleasant experience. I highly recommend it. Um, Twisted Mexi makes that mod. I will also link that one for you guys. Um, it, it also does other cool things. Like I do, I did since I downloaded it mainly because you could clone debug items, um, but you can scale things more precisely. So, um, and I used that a few times in this build where I wanted, a, instead of wanting a plant that was like two times as big or as big, which is how you can scale in the Sims normally. Um, you can put in like a specific amount so you could size 60% as big or one and a quarter times as big. And I did use that a couple times because sometimes you want a plant that's like, just, you need the plant to be a little bigger, a little bit smaller, especially doing that with plants is nice because you can use the same plant. Um, so if it's a simple plant, like scaling it, you know, looks like you have two of a real life plant, especially in landscaping, that's super useful. Um, to the house here, I'm working on this bookshelf in our living room. This is the point, this layout is the part that was heavily inspired on the house. Um, they had a fireplace here. They have this open L-shaped living room. It even took some of the color inspiration is lightly taken from the styles they in their house, like these birch woods. Of like cop Scandinavian is how I'd imagine it. Um, but and I do end up this fireplace does not stay bright white, but uh, I used a lot of plants in here. I think I'm always going to use a lot of plants. They have a cool like circle cutout hole in their wall, and I looked a little bit into seeing if there was some custom content that did it, but then I was like, oh, I'll just stick a mirror there and we'll get the idea. So you get the idea, um, but they have this little, this is kind of the weird thing, because I was saying this house feels really big and there is some like really unused space. I end up with this very big hallway. You can kind of see, actually there's a couple of hallways in this space that are really big, but like the actual living kitchen dining space is fairly small. Um, 
I, I think I made some compromises in how I did this layout. Like, you have everything you need. Like, they actually have a ton of dining space because, as you see, I'm starting to lay a kitchen. Um, but, like, because there's dining, there's an island with dining. Like, nothing is actually small, but and it, I don't feel like this house feels big. Like, it is big in some ways, but it doesn't feel like I'm where there's just, like, you know, what is this room? Oh, it's my piano's shoes room because you just need to throw stuff in a room. I think that's a nice thing. It's a very big and it took me, I was surprised how long it took to uh, build and decorate because of that because I, I really have stuck to, even though I, the f mm, no, so like the first house I did was just a two bedroom house. So this, um, having the three bedroom plus the office plus all the, the and that one was super open layout. This one has m like, a little bit slightly more closed off layout is still very obviously open plan. But anyway, we're working on the kitchen here and I just need to sing the praises of Harry's kitchen. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Inset because, oh my gosh, it's perfect. You put it out, all these cups and glasses are like pre-grouped. I also found this cute like little bit colorful vintage dishware um, that was perfect. But like this kitchen came together so fast for me um, and I really love it. That kitchen set, I can see that every time I make a CC kitchen, I imagine it will make an appearance somehow. Those counters aren't from it, neither are the fridge. The fridge is from Ravishing Smeglish set, and the counters are incredible, I believe. Um, I look specific. And we're gonna use more of the kitchen in here. Um, so, and I get to finally build, I get to use uh, Tiny Twavelers, which is. Uh, the kid set that Harry and it's Harry and Felix Andre. I always feel like I, I short him, but um, because I, I found these through Harry, I for but they're collabs between her and Felix Andre Sims. Um, but I find they're set for kids in this build, and it is so much fun. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself, so we're working on. The dining area here, so this does have, um, like I said, it's, it's, there's a lot of space in this house, but the spaces themselves end up being fairly small, but it has a formal dining area. It has, um, I feel like it has lots of space to live in. My vision for this house, by the way, besides it being based on this real life house, was the idea that this is the like coastal getaway that you would have in New York, that this is a city family, you know, from San Myshunu, and that the mom of this family is a high powered fashion designer, um, but that this, they kind of get away from the city in the summers so that this is their summer home. Um, and so that it's their home, but maybe not, where they spend all their time. So maybe it's a little more, uh, like it's made to be a home. It's not like a vacation rental, but that maybe things are a little bit that that smallness comes out of that, that it is a second home. It's nice. It's what, but it doesn't have like all their things here. I was saying in the beginning, um, this does use quite a few different packs, but I would say like all the laundry days basically contained in that room. And I think I use a couple plants somewhere. And then I use a lot of stuff from cats and dogs. And the coffee table is from City Living. Almost everything else I use is like a one-off item and it's mostly decorative. So if you wanted to, if you don't have those packs, cause I feel like with the CC build, I used a lot of packs at the end of the day in this build. Um, but I feel like the advantage of CC should be that you don't have to buy a bunch of expansion packs. So I did just want, want people to know that with this build, even dogs, I think you would really feel that the, I honestly don't think you could even place this without cats and dogs, cats is essential, but I think almost any of the other packs that you would be for the build missing, but like you would still have a very functional build. There's just decorations. Like I use a lot of kids room stuff in the boys room, but even that most of most of the stuff in there is still from CC packs, so I don't think you would be lacking any significant. Like you would maybe lack like the 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 lawn chairs in the front yard are from Eco Lifestyle. There's like those drink trays from Eco Lifestyle, and I think I did use those bottles from Eco Lifestyle that will now be in every build I make till the end of time and stuff like that. But there's nothing. 
there's no significant pieces. You're not gonna really like missing part of the kitchen um, because you don't have one of those packs. So I think as long as you had cats and dogs, and then obviously like if you don't have laundry day, there won't be any laundry, but you can put something else in that room. It can be some other storage, um, but almost everything else comes from custom content. You can also find there will be a link, a, a post with list of download links for all the custom content on my uh, Tumblr. So if you want to download those um, and you can also check out if you guys want. Um, I am on Instagram. I did post to this early on Instagram this week, but. Um, if you ever want to see some more photos of the inside, you can always check out there. I sometimes also post like a little bit of sneak peeks of what I'm working on ahead of time. So if you're in it, if that's a place you, a social media out on, do post some build stuff there. Um, but we have moved on to the giant bedroom. I love this bedroom. I, it's, so I kind of can tell like fashion designer theme here so she has like a whole vanity area but I wanted it all to be so it's funny because I, I, I had thought in my head when I started making this that like oh the people who live here are kind of minimalist and then as I built on I was like no no this is this is not the home of minimalist but I feel like I wanted to keep that 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 what it ended up being more this idea of like of just nice like elegance but like trying to keep some of that minimalist spirit some of like the vintage and more um plants and flowers than like gaudiness so you know like here like she's got the brown bottle peony instead of like something so like I used a lot of flowers a lot of things that I felt like kind of maybe instead of there being so much stuff in the house have there be more plants but there are these really like fancy areas like I use these mirrored um end tables and dressers um those are also from Ravishing her CC is amazing um I use a lot basically 90% of this build probably comes down to Ravishing or RVSN if you look for her um Peacemaker and Harry and Felix Andre um, if you download all their CC you, and a logical sim, use a lot of a logical sims, uh, minimalist bedroom in here. Cause like I said, I had a thought that these people would be minimalist. They're not. Um, and so I feel like those, that a lot of the stuff I use come from them. There is a smattering of other things, but the vast majority of stuff you use probably falls in those four. Um, creators, like I said, but the idea with that bedroom or that bedroom rather, <laughs> is to have, I wanted things to, to, to walk that line between um, kind of luxurious, but simple. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. That that's the what I want this house. This house to be luxurious and simple and a little bit colorful and creative. The idea being this creative couple that lives here, um, they're business owner, but that they do want, uh, they want that kind of reflects their particular style. So I did use more color, like use these colorful tiles. I used a lot of orange in the rugs, you'll see, and that was very much, I guess I came from that inspiration where they use some, a lot of their fabrics use kind of that orange green palette in it. So that did inspire a lot of the house. Uh, and I know, I know some people really don't like it just really orange, but I think when it's used carefully and as an accent it's it can it can be done well like you will notice that most of that living room is white um there is the big orange rug but that's like the only orange thing in the living room and I think that's how if you're going to use orange that's how you have to use it and here we finally get to break out the tiny traveler stuff and look at it it's so cute there's a cute pink bed there's this beautiful rug which is super versatile as you'll see because I actually use it in the boys room and it looks completely different in there you get the cute little pink tent I made this little reading nook oh I do use that dollhouse from eco lifestyle but like you could swap that out for base game easily um I do I didn't realize that when you size I've always sized down the dollhouses and it was kind of like eh, the animation can deal but 
Uh, apparently, because of the way the kids play, it doesn't even mess up the animation. So you feel free to size down your dollhouses because I do feel like they just work better one size down. But you'll see here, I used this cute little tree bookshelf. This is like 90% Tiny Travelers because it's adorable. And then we went with the, I think it's a base game penguin wallpaper to, to tie in with the bed. But I really love these kids' rooms. And I feel like you realize how... Uh, so I haven't done a lot of kids' rooms, but the, other, the last time I worked on one, they're just... It feels like you have a lot of options, but when you really start trying to put in everything in a kid's room, it's like, well, I can use this thing or that thing. Um, and it feels like they get pretty quickly repetitive. And I feel like this is one moment where like, by this point, especially if you do have some of the expansion packs, um, even though when I did the base game build, like we have options for couches and tables and we have so many toilets, still not as many kitchen counters as, as we've all noticed, but we have options, but the kids rooms do feel like we're really like lacking in fun, like kids bedding. And like, I feel like kids rooms just are a place where you can use a lot of personality. Like this boys room, I end up kind of making, I really love this boys room. Um, it, this boy is very clearly into, uh, the, oh, oh my gosh, the void critters and Harry Puffer, which is another beautiful CC set. But like, I feel like you can bring in so much personality to a kids room. Um, because you, you have all these decals and stuff and like, sure, we get like the void critters with kids room stuff for sure that helped. Uh, but it's just really, I really realized how much like the difference with using CC for kids rooms versus, um, just what is offered without it. Uh, CC is kind of a pain in the butt. It does really slow my computer down. So definitely if you have, and I don't even have like a low end computer, it's just older. It's a very old, it's a nice, but old computer. I um, mean, it's a Mac too. So I don't think anything ever runs quite as well on it, but so just be aware that, um, and I use a lot of mirrors in this build too, but be aware that if you are doing very CC heavy things to kind of watch the fan on your computer, it can be pretty taxing. But so I was going to say, like, I love using CC, but it takes forever for my game to start up with. Um, and it's I just wish that there were some more options given to us in the base game that we didn't have to depend on custom content like that shouldn't be. We shouldn't have to depend on it, but um, I am getting this is basically the, almost the end of the build here. We're going to have more. Um, the kind of surprise room in this house to do after this hallway. But I do want to just thank you guys for watching. I know you'll notice this me a long time, so there was no video last week, and it is going to be up on the channel, I think, a day later than usual. I usually try to upload on Fridays, and I'm going to try and keep that, but I also just realized that, like, for me, this is a lot about is just showing you guys what I'm doing, what I'm building. I don't actually want to be the next YouTube star by any means. I just like to share my work. So I will just try for consistency's sake to try and keep uploading things on Fridays, but it may not be every Friday and sometimes it might be a Saturday. Um, but I would really appreciate it because of the particular, because of the YouTube. Um, if you would subscribe and like, um, leave a comment letting me know whether you want to see more custom content builds or whether you um, want to see some limited pack builds. I would love suggestions for those. I'm going to try and do some of those. So if you have a particular combination of packs you have and you want to build for, please leave those in the comments or any requests you have. Um, I do really appreciate all the comments you guys have left so far uh, and just the the support and feedback that I've gotten, um, it's been really, I kind of started this on a whim. I just was like, oh, hey, I, I can screen record. It would be fun. And I think it's also been really refreshing to realize I've always played The Sims is like a whole community now as someone who grew up The Sims, but always felt like you weren't, you know, like I was always in build mode, but was always felt like, oh, I should really play the game and I still would like to play the game, but honestly, I never get there because I spend all my time in build mode, but that didn't feel like, um, 
there wasn't a community there, so it felt like, I don't know how to explain it, but just that it always felt like you're like, oh, okay, I built a house, but like we had the gallery, sure, but, and I, there was a community and I just, at that point in my life, just didn't really ever like get connected to it, but I have really enjoyed being able to share what I'm building to see people appreciate it, download it. Um, so just thank you guys. I'll see you next week. I hope you enjoyed this build and I hope you have a great week. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and do all those YouTube things and I will see you soon. 